Welcome to the WREL Daily Download. I'm Grace Holland. The Wolf Pack is losing its longtime leader as Chancellor Randy Woodson announces he is retiring in 2025. We spoke to him last week as he reflects on his time leading NC State University. WREL sports investigative reporter Brian Murphy joins me to talk about what this means. Thanks for being here, Brian. Yeah, thanks for having me. So what is Woodson's background and how did he become chancellor at NC State? Well, he's been chancellor for a really long time. He took over in 2010. He came from Purdue University in Indiana. And NC State's made remarkable progress under his leadership. I mean, the the Chronicle of Higher Education recently wrote an article calling him the politically invincible chancellor. Mm. Um, While other chancellors have run, you know, a foul or a muck uh, with uh, some of the political leadership in the state, Woodson has not. Um, and part of that is his record at NC State. That the NC State's climbed 51 spots in the U.S. News and World Report during his tenure. Their their um, research money has is number six in the country for schools without a, a without a medical school. Um, the endowment has grown four times since he took over. So he has a lot of things uh, to be proud about and happy about, and and sort of hang his hat on. And were we expecting his retirement? Um, I know he's in his late 60s, but was this something that uh, we had any inkling that was going to happen? And do we know what his plans are when he leaves the university? Yeah, we did. Um, When he got his latest contract extension, uh, they offered him five years and he only took a two year contract. And that contract expires June 30th, 2025, the end of the school year, the end of the fiscal year. Um, And by announcing now he gives the search committee, you know, a year uh, to, to get his replacement in place. So this has all been pretty well orchestrated. Peter Hans, the president of the UNC system, said that two years ago they kind of twisted his arm and got him to stay for two more years uh, as they dealt with the after effects of COVID. Um, and so, you know, he's seen the university through through the last couple of years and, and he'll be here for, for one more year. He said that when he retires, he, he's not going to take another academic job. Um, and it doesn't sound like he's going to take another job at all, although, you know, he'll be in high demand, I'm sure, for boards and and different things like that. But he said he wants to retire here in Raleigh. He said he has grown children that live here. He and his wife plan to stay in Raleigh. How did students, alumni, people around the state react to the news of, of his retirement? Yeah, I think it was, since it was so kind of expected, um, and because it's not happening immediately, uh, I, I, the reaction has been somewhat muted. I think you know leaders around the state, as I said earlier, sort of have, have a, a lot of respect for what Randy Woodson has been able to do at NC State. And so you saw some of that in some of the comments that came out uh, just praising his leadership. And NC State has started sort of a year-long campaign to kind of commemorate his uh, tenure. And they're asking for comments from faculty and staff and students. And uh, it'll be interesting to see as he kind of gets a farewell tour in a way. It'll be interesting to see over that year, you know, kind of what that looks like. All right, let's take a quick break right there and we'll be right back. Brian, before the break, we were kind of just talking about what this initial news has been like uh, throughout last week. But what are some of the challenges that Woodson has dealt with as chancellor in the last 15 years as he's been in that role? Yeah, I mean, I, I mentioned earlier some of the accomplishments that he's had. It, you know, certainly graduation rates are, are much higher. They're up to 85.3 uh, percent. That's up about 7 percent from when he took over. Uh, they award more than 10,000 degrees a year at NC State. He said that 39,000 students will be coming in the fall. So enrollment is up. It is actually the largest uh, by by enrollment of all the UNC system schools. Um, the one thing that's going to get a ton of attention and, and has already is Poe Hall. Um, certainly WRL has done a lot of reporting on Poe Hall, which is an academic building on campus where they've found a cancer cluster. Um, mm-hmm. And there are some problems with the with the building itself that that – we think has seemingly led to people getting that worked and studied in that building, getting cancer. Um, some faculty groups have have voiced uh, no confidence in Randy Woodson based on his um, the way he's handled his handling of the Poe Hall um, incident. I guess it's it's hard to put into words what exactly is happening at Poe Hall. Um, but right, there's so much we're still trying to figure out. Right, testing is going on at the building. He talked about wanting to to remediate that building uh, in the next year. He said it's going to cost an awful lot of money. There's still testing going on. They're still waiting for the federal government, a federal investigation, to tell them exactly what to do. So I think Poe Hall is certainly going to be something that that gets put in his resume or in his legacy 
Um, one thing I would add, and just coming from my background, is athletics. Uh, mm-hmm. The university enjoyed probably its greatest season ever um, in the last year. Both the men's and women's team basketball teams made the Final Four. The football team is poised to have one of a breakout season and perhaps even reach the college football playoff this year, the expanded college football playoff. The baseball team went to the College World Series. Um, you know, but he also cast the deciding vote to expand the ACC from 15 teams to 18 teams by inviting Stanford and Cal and SMU and has never really given a full accounting for why he changed his vote. Uh, NC State was initially opposed to that expansion and and is and then eventually cast their vote for it. So you know, when you're at a university for 15 years, there are going to be highs, there are going to be lows. But I think overall, and you've seen this sort of in the tone of of the reaction, his leadership or, or his time at NC State is, is viewed very positively. It sounds like a steady hand is what he's been. Yeah, and, and NC State needed that. Uh, he said he talked about when he took over the job that, it, you know, the, the initial input that he got from lots of people was NC State wanted a leader who was going to stick around. They wanted someone who's going to be steady, who is going to be at the university for a long time. And I think, you know, Woodson talked uh, last week about the fact that he was able to, you know, basically have his entire career at two schools. He was at Purdue for a very long time. He was at NC State for a very long time. And uh, that's not something that, that, you know, leaders often get to get to do. So I think he was the right person at the right time for NC State for what they needed. Right. And what else did he say when we sat down with him? Was there anything particular that stood out to you? You know, he. I think it'll be interesting what he can get done in this final year. I mean, he, he made a point to say, I'm, I'm still here, uh, mm-hmm. even though he's announced he's retiring and the search committee has already been, you know, um, named. He's still got another year to go. And I think there are a lot of things he does want to get accomplished. We talked about some of the Poe Hall stuff, but you know, NC State is welcoming a huge class in part because of that athletic success. I was at a board of trustees meeting earlier in uh, this year, and they talked about how the, because when they send out their acceptance letters, they know precisely, you know, what percentage of people who get accepted to the school are going to come. Well, those acceptance letters went out. Both teams made the final fours, and suddenly the num- the percentage of people who said, yes, I'm going to go to NC State was, was much higher yeah. than it has been in previous years and you know they have pretty good formulas for figuring that out so right. they're going to have a larger class uh starting in the fall than they even anticipated and so i think he's really excited about having you know such a large class and it really got the sense that he he has enjoyed being around students mm-hmm. um and so it'll be interesting in this last year you know if anything comes out to to change that but i don't think so i think he i think he's very excited and it seems like he has a lot of energy to, to attack this last year. Right. And you mentioned the search committee um, getting started and everything. And earlier you mentioned that Peter Hans had kind of asked him to, to stay on a little bit longer than maybe he initially planned to. Do we know what the timeline for a replacement is? And, of course, this comes as there are a couple other vacancies at the chancellor level in the system. Yeah, there are now four vacancies, four permanent – well, you know, depending on how you count NC State, but they're, they're, they are searching for four permanent chancellors in the system, including – at UNC Chapel Hill and at NC State, the two biggest, most important schools in the entire UNC system. That's on top of four other chancellors that started this year. And so you're talking about eight chancellors. That's that's half of the system Mm -hmm. being replaced in in what looks like probably a two-year period or even less than a two-year period. Um, Six to nine months is the typical timeline for this. Uh, Obviously, Woodson giving this much time gives NC State a little bit more time. Um, but it is a highly competitive market right now, and that's what we're hearing out of the UNC search for these kind of leaders. Um, we heard that uh, as many as half of the top 50 schools in the country have changed leaders in the last two years. Some of this is a buildup from COVID. Uh, mm-hmm. Leaders like Randy Woodson stuck around to to get through the COVID period, and now they're reaching that time where, where it is time for them to, to go on to other things. Now, the University of Florida just announced their, their president is leaving, Ben Sass, a former U.S. senator. So I, I think the pool, the, the last point I would make is that the pool for the replacement, I think, is larger than just academia. Mm-hmm. Typically, this job would go to someone, in, in, in Woodson's case, he was a provost at Purdue, came to be the chancellor at, at NC State. That's sort of a typical path. But what we're seeing is that these are highly complex business organizations with huge budgets, huge politics involved. And so the the field of candidates, I think, is growing. Uh, military leaders, um, business leaders, politicians even. Um, I think 
NC State and UNC and some of these other chancellor searches may have to expand who they're looking for uh, because these are complex jobs that are very well-paid jobs, by the way. And so they, they can attract a wide range of leaders from across industries across the country. All right. Well, it's definitely something we'll be watching until his uh, retirement uh, next spring. Thank you so much, Brian. And thank you for listening to the WREL Daily Download. Another great way to get WREL news is the Morning Briefing newsletter. It's a daily email that's waiting in your inbox every morning with local news, events, and headlines to get you ready for the day. Sign up at WREL.com newsletter.